general manager and metropolitan pension trust. And he is the person of Mr. Isaka Ibrahim. So we are going to close. Let's confirm him.
those who are working, how are they feeling? So let's go through some statistics. So Old Mutual Financial Services conducted a survey just last year. And in the survey, they asked people who are working. These are former sector workers and informal sector workers. Former sector workers are government workers and those in the private sector. They end up salary on monthly basis. Any former sector workers are like market women, those who are doing their kapapa movements and all that. You know, those are the informal sector workers. So they asked them. First question was, how are you feeling about your finances? And then so was, oh, it's, 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 it's quite clear. By about 64% of those who are working feel that they are financially stressed. 64%. They are working, they are getting salary. But they are feeling financially stressed. When you talk about financial stress, what you mean is that when you wake up in the morning, all they think about is money. How they are going to cater for their expenses, how they are going to take care of their kids, how they are going to give their, their parents some money and everything. 64%. That means two out of three. If you, if you take every three workers, two out of the three workers feel that they are financially stressed. So colleagues, it's not about when I get a job, my finances will be okay. Because you still have a long way to go. Now they went on to ask again. How do you feel about the things you buy now? Are they okay for you? Again, 55% of those who are working. We are students, so let me give you an idea of those who are working, what I say. 55% of those who are working say what they are able to purchase now is less than what they are able to purchase as of last year. What it means is that they are, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, they are Purchasing power has reduced. So if they were able to buy um, a bottle of water yesterday, now they are only buying such as water. They are earning salary, but year every year their purchasing power reduced. And then they went on to ask, I don't want to paint a gloomy picture, but let me give you an idea of what's happening in the world out there. They went on to ask. Okay, how are you able to finance your expenses? How are you able to finance all your expenses? Only two out of three percent of people who are in formal employment and who are working on their own are able to finance all their expenses. Only two out of three people. What happens to the rest? And let me tell you what happens to the rest. 24% say they borrow from family and friends. So it is not surprising that you hear a friend will call you at this month, they have to stop me out. The person is working, but every month he has to go to WhatsApp to for them to do you know, contributions for him. <laughs> Some of us are very There is this particular friend who will call you at the end of every month. But if you see your phone ringing, see, there are some And the person is working. You know? 12% still borrow from just savings and loans and So for them, every month, they will go for school. And that's to cater for their needs. And these are not students, these are people who are working. Let me fast track it and go to retirement. Okay, you are working. But have thought about a time where you will not be working? Have you thought about a time where you will not be able to work again? 
guess what a lot of them said? 50% of them said, well, I have a kid, so when they go, they will take care of me. 70% of those who are currently working say, well, um, raise your kid for their team to what, develop. So that when you grow older, they also look after you for your team to fall off. So if you're a student, know that your parents are expecting to take care of them financially. When as you are going. And this is working getting salaries every month. So I always want to bring this to the attention of a lot of us to understand that it is not just about getting employment and earning a salary every month. Once you get the opportunity to be here, there should be something that sticks in your mind, which is called financial planning. You need to understand what financial planning is all about. Otherwise, you'll be among these statistics. You are 30 and you want to give that help because you want your kids to come and take care of you. <laughs> you are 28 and every month you are looking through your phone to call your friend. Once you have the opportunity to be here today, let's have that at the back of our minds, what we call financial planning. So today I am going to discuss what financial planning is all about. And I think Peter alluded to, to that. Financial planning essentially is about what to do with your money in order to reach a specific goal and figuring out how you reach that goal. So financial planning is basically about how you want to manage your money. That's it. That's, that's just about financial planning. So it's not a big English it is not some English or some bankers or some investment people or some insurance people. This is for all of us. How we manage our finances is important for all of us. And in doing so, there are three components we need to understand. In financial planning, there are three components we need to understand. The first one has to be your income. But before I come to that, why do you think financial planning is very important? Anyone can give us an idea. Why is financial planning important? We've spoken about all the statistics, we've spoken about all the nuances. Yes, madam. To ensure a better future. To ensure a better future. Very good. I owe you a lollipop. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Who else can give us an idea about why financial financial planning is very important? Yes, sir. Definitely. To cater for our independence. You what, what do I do you? This <laughs> Anyway, so let's look at why financial planning is important. The first one is to help us achieve our goals. All of us have financial goals. Whether you, you buy burger in the morning or you eat a day in the evening, it's a financial goal. Whether you use cater for your uh, expense tomorrow or you have to give your mother or your father some money, it's a financial goal. So financial plan is important because one, it helps us in reaching our goal. Two, it helps us to control money. If you don't have a plan, you don't know how to control your money. And every day you always look at your pocket and say, ah, what did I do with my money? It happens to us a lot of times because we have not planned for our finances. The third one is for us to get ready for any unexpected expenses, for any surprises. If you are the first one, I see a lot of people shaking their head, then you know for the responsibilities of a first one. You get up and your younger sister has called you, oh, my phone fell into water. First ones. I 
due to I have not planned for finances. So financial planning is to help us cater for all surprises. The third one is important because it helps us to deal with debt. So many of us, you know, have borrowed. It's normal. Students loans, and it comes money. You know, or we borrow from our friends to buy some uh, um, handouts or some pamphlets. It's normal. But we need to plan to pay that debt. Don't be in the habit of not paying your debt. Hello. Hi. You need to be able to pay your debt. So financial plan is important because it helps us in dealing with our debt. The fourth part is that it helps us in planning for retirement. Don't think that you are too young, so retirement will not come. I, I, I heard my brother say there are two things that surely will come, debt and taxes. But if you don't that, you will retire. So retirement is a constant. You will be 60. Unless you don't want to be 60. But you will be 60, you will retire. And you need to plan for when you are going to be 60. Don't leave it to chance. Don't say, I'll give you to 12 kids to so take care of you. And lastly, it's just to give us a peace of mind. When you wake up today and you know that, oh, in the afternoon, I'm sorted, I can eat some dried rice. In the evening, I'm sorted, I can eat some bamboo and cocoa. You are relaxed. But you wake up in the morning and you don't know what you eat in the afternoon. My brother, no I shit. You'll be moving from dorm to dorm, hostel to hostel, you know, with your nose high, smelling where the streets are, are cooking, because you don't have peace of mind. So essentially, financial planning is important because it gives us peace of mind. And as I mentioned, there are three components of financial planning to understand. The first one is your income. And income is basically the money you get. You can't plan if you don't know the money you get. Hello? So we need to understand the money we get. And there are two sources of money we get. The first source is what we call a fixed income. So fixed income is basically money you get on a regular basis. You get it constant on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis. That's fixed income. And this can be the allowances our parents give us on a monthly basis. Um, it can be if you, if you own some um, a car and you rented it out, if somebody is doing, um, what do you call it? Um, if, if you have some investment and you have some income for it, it is fixed, constant. So if it's 100 cities, 100 cities at the very least. So monthly or yearly, it comes at a fixed rate. The next income is what you call variable income. So variable income is basically money that you are not sure whether you get or you not get. You know, so for our ladies, you know, our boyfriends are sometimes you don't know whether you get or you not get. Or the guys who go to who are investors and go to get to it, you are not sure, Charlie. Man will ruin this much or they don't ruin this much. You know, so these are variable incomes. So to understand your source of, of income, you need to know there are two sources. One fixed income, you are sure that this money gets to come. And secondly, variable income. You don't know where this money will come or it's not come. If you are working for an insurance company and you are paying commission, this month will go up, the next month it will come down. Those are variable incomes. Hello? Hi. So we now understand what income is and how we get income, right? The second leg of financial planning is what you call expenses. Very important. Expenses. The money that has come. How do you spend it? There is formation for how you spend money. We don't spend money anyhow. 
and those who are into football and the Pep Guardiola people, the most basic formation for spending money is what we call the 532, the 532 formation. Let's say 532. 532. So there is a basic formation for how we spend money. We don't spend money anyhow, uh, my brothers and sisters. We don't put money in our pockets and go to town and buy anything. No. You need formation for your money. So the basic finance I said is 532. So 532 means, first of all, the money that you have, you should divide it into two. 50% of the money should go for your needs. They are your needs. You can't live without. So, like your hotel rent, your school fees, um, your transportation, your utilities, your groceries, like your curry, your rice, your shit all, 50% should go in for that. You can't live without that. Now the remaining 50, you divide it again. 30% of the remaining 50 should go in for your wants. So like Charlie, life is first, we want to chill out more. At least you can have some money here. You know? You want to buy some nice clothes. You can have the money there. You want to buy some gadgets, some charges, some iPhone covers. You don't just set up and buy it to ladies and gentlemen. You need to plan for it. The money can go in there. You know, you like football, you want to play your PlayStation. You can start saving for us that from your wants. So 30% should go in for your wants. So our ladies and gentlemen, the gentlemen who think Charlie Edmonds they have to buy my shoe. It's a shoe they need. Is that really a need? If it's just, it should be part of the 50%. If it's just a want, it should be part of the 30%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the remaining 20, you go to what you have as the savings and investment. The savings and investment. So every month, the first thing you have to be very religious enough to have 20% at least save this to an account. It can be a retirement account, it can be an investment account, it can be an emergency account, it can be an insurance account. 20% make sure that it's going in for this. It's very important to, I'm talking and laughing, so it's very, very important. Otherwise, if you're looking at you may have kids to take care of you. You pass on the 70%. Life doesn't that, 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 that just happen. You need to plan it at the end of every day. You need to make sure that you are planning your life. So now, you need to understand how you are spending your money. And this is what you need to have. It can change. As you are a young person, if you don't have a lot of wants, so you can do more savings. So you can have what? 442. But I have 34. So it changes. 541. Hey, 541. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But the point is that at the end of every month, make sure that you have information for your expenses. Don't let that really pressure you. <laughs> to pressure you to always spend 20% in addition to this. Don't let that guy pressure you. <laughs> always make sure you have information for your expenses. And the last one I want to talk about is the savings. Why do we have to save? Why do we have to save? One, because we want to maintain a certain level of lifestyle. If we spend all our money today, 
and we talk about how we are going to maintain that lifestyle tomorrow. The price of goods and commodities are always rising. You go to market today and tomorrow the price have changed. If you don't save extra, will you be able to take care of those rising prices? Healthcare. The older we grow, our healthcare depreciates, or our healthcare degrades. It's normal. So if you don't save extra, how are you going to take care of your health? And life happens. Anything can happen. Things can just bad into your hotel. And it's still your stuff, your laptop, your phones. If you don't have extra savings, how are you going to cater for unexpected life uncertainties? And lastly, retirement plan. If you don't have savings, retirement plan is always going to be difficult. So these are the reasons why we need to save. And when I talk about savings, as I, as I mentioned, I'm talking about investment, insurance, emergency funds, and retirement funds. Many of us think it is, it is out of the world. But let's just look at it, a simple example. You are a student, 25 years. You want to put down 100 CDs for the next 35 years to go on retirement. See what happens. Monthly basis, you are putting down 100 Ghana cities, right here, for the next 35 years. Let's go. For the next 35 years, you have saved 42,000 Ghana cities just on your own contributions. Most importantly, if you are saving in a retirement fund and investment, there's something we call compound interest. And if you have the effect of compound interest, you will have gained an interest of 3.4 million. If you have a compound interest, you have gained an interest of 3.4 million. Maybe you are an SRC president, so you can save up to 200 Ghana cities. But you know, we have just saved 42,000. Sorry. We have saved. Let's go to the next slide, please. We have saved 84,000 Ghana cities. Your interest would have been 6.8 million. These are not the years I came up with you. This is real, the effect of compounding interest. If you were to save 200 Ghana cities monthly, I see someone saying, shh. If it's other five years ago, we have been there. But this is it. So let's start early. Let's start early. And no amount is too small. Maybe you are as as you said. So you can do maybe how much time analysis. And don't ask me how she gets it. Let's look at how much she would have saved in the next 35 years. She would have saved 126,000. 300 Ghana cities. The one we used to buy credit every month. Yes, that's how much. You would have saved 126,000 Ghana cities by the end of 35 years. Your interest would have been 10 million. Yeah, so if you don't consider savings and investments, this is what I'm talking about. Your interest alone would have been 10 million. When you get this money, you'll still be looking, at, looking for your children to take care of you. I'm sure you go to some Bahamas or some Hawaii or some, you know, Seychelles or more things to go and show. Ten million. Pay me by cash in your account. By the time you go on the time. So we need to stay financially disciplined. Let's not think that financial planning is something that is meant for the banks and we all need to stay financially disciplined. And there are very five key important items that we need to have at the back of our minds. 
If you didn't hear anything, this is what I'm saying before. If you didn't hear anything, please listen. Five items. The first item is every month, make sure you list all your people. Every month, make sure wherever you are getting your money from, you list it down. Just put the pen and just list it down. Every month. You know what money is. Either variable or fixed. Make sure you are listing it. Oh, mommy gave me 10 cents. Oh, okay, gave me 2 cents. List all your food. The second item is that always see before you spend. Many of us are in the habit of, oh, let me spend and I'll save later. Ten months. Because by the time you finish spending, you really want to go and spend more. So always save before you spend. The third item is always know what you are spending on. Always have an idea about what you are spending your money on. Don't go out and come back and you don't have money in your pocket and say, hey, you think I'm sending this out. Always know when you buy a dog that one can please put it out. Don't let them call you CG. Don't let them call you CG. Put it down because it's very important. Know where you are spending your money. The fourth item is that have a spending limit. Please, always know that as I'm going out, I will put it there by the end So when I go and buy one, draw what I suggest, I am working. Because then Ghana, we have to get even in Always have a limit on your spending. It's very important because the more you have, the higher tendency of spending. So you can put money in your envelopes and say, okay, we are spending 50 Ghana or I spend hundred dollars, have a spending limit. And tell me, adjust, and sorry, and keep me, adjust when you can. Life changes, life happens. Maybe today you can't spend fifty dollars, but by some unfortunate instances, you have to spend seventy dollars. Don't tie your legs to your money. Please spend the seventy dollars. So always adjust when you can. If you are able to do all these things on a monthly basis, you have what you call personal monthly budget. And this is what personal monthly budget is. You know all that where your money is coming from. Wherever the money is coming from, you know. You have limits for all your expenses, your rent, utility, buying pamphlet, buying utilities and everything. You know where you spend. And you know how to save. Hello. Ah. You know how to save. So always have a personal money budget. Very, very important. I've been asked that I have to conclude. But I'll conclude with a quote from Eric, a German. You know, we started our conversation by asking what is the biggest event. Everybody said, when I get your but this man, Eric Walsh, he said to be financially stable is doing best with what you have and not achieving a certain level of income. So if you want to be financially stable, it's just do best with whatever you have and not start dreaming of achieving a certain level of income. We take it here and they say, catch your codes, according to yourself. Thank you very much.